Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury 33, commentating another match between J Raccoon and Cybernetic Pony, this time on Act Natural. And Act Natural is another map which actually hasn't. No, this hasn't been coming up too recently. I think it's recent enough that most people would recognize it, but just in case, main bases are at the southwest and northeast. There's natural expansions over right next to those bases with some choke points to protect against them. Or protect them with, I should say. Expansions over to the southeast and northwest, which are historically quite important expansions. It's very common for players to go over here, as well as some expansions directly to the south or north of those, which are also fairly important, but usually not quite as contested, or at least not quite as quickly jumped to as the corner expansions here. And some others in the center, which get used a bit risky, but they do have the large QP crates, so it's a lot of Q plasma right there. Jericoon going for Grecon very quickly, Cybernetic Pony going for CISO, and I expect. Oh, I was about to say, I expect Cybernetic Pony to go for the same rush he did last game, but he's not. He's going for three resource processors and an importer, which means he's not going for the stand, the, well, standard, it's not really standard yet, but definitely his signature, better way of putting it, his signature 2RP3 importer rush, which he did last game to great effect. Admittedly, J Raccoon wasn't defending against it especially well, but it still would have been a hard-won fight, probably, if he had. On this game, however, it looks like Cybernetic Pony is not going for that. Jericoon also not going for any sort of rush feint. On Act Natural, the rush distance is quite long, so doing that, doing those sorts of rush feints can work. It's just a little bit more difficult than Sam Act Valley. And Cybernetic Pony is really not focused on rush. As I mentioned, he is just setting up a bit of a safe opening. The early importer, I'm not quite sure about. It's safe, certainly. It allows him to build up infantry if he wants to. But it also means he has to wait that many more resource processor gathering cycles in order to get... I'm just getting a second importer. This is interesting. Maybe he's going for a 3RP3 importer and just slightly more stable build on this rush. I He might be going for a rush, it's just... Yeah, with a second importer, that pretty much supports the idea. Anyway, as I was saying, the importer costs 50 LC, and 8 LC a pop for resource processors every harvest cycle. That's an extra... Well, it's an extra six harvest cycles, which is about a minute and a half. Well, a little over, actually seven harvest cycles. It was a little over a minute and a half. And Cybernetic Pony going for a bit of a scout. We see he knows what Jericoon is up to. Jericoon is playing Grekum. And Jericoon very quickly going for this corner expansion that I mentioned. Sending an Octo there. I don't know if he's going to build an RP immediately or if he's going to wait, have it for defense. I, I imagine he's going to build an RP. There's no reason to really defend against this. The thing is, the way the map is laid out, there isn't a direct path from the northeast base to the southeast expansion, nor from the southwest base to the northeast expansion, or northwest expansion, so it's not likely that a player will go to that one. Normally, the north player goes to the north expansion, the south player goes to the south expansions. It's typically how it progresses. I don't expect that Jericho will go for that. And it looks like he's actually aborting that, so he might just be scouting, figuring out if Cybernetic Pony is hanging out there at all. Or... Possibly trying to trick Cybernetic Pony into thinking that he's expanding in case Cybernetic Pony goes for a harassment on that expansion, which is extremely metagame heavy. I mean, that's metagame knowledge right there, which, like, that would be something he expects Cybernetic Pony to know, which Cybernetic Pony, I don't know if he realizes the way this map tends to play out. Because, yeah, commonly a player would actually, if someone who really knows this map would go for this expansion, just to double check, make sure that their opponent, whether or not they're expanding there, it's a nice feint by J. Raccoon. It's just a little bit wasted on Cybernetic Pony at this point, since I don't think he knows how typical that expansion is. Or if he does, he just doesn't care. I mean, it's very clear that Cybernetic Pony is not worried about scouting those expansions. He's simply worried about seeing what J. Raccoon is up to, and assuming that J. Raccoon is just staying in his main base to start. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is going for the natural expansion, the nearby expansion, and not the further expansion, which is not at all surprising. So it looks like he is going for infantry heavy just with slightly more of an economic focus so he can transition into the mid game more safely than a pure infantry rush would do. And as far as he's concerned, he's also doing a ton of damage to J Raccoon, but, but J Raccoon likely is not going to allow this to happen. Probably going to have some defenses set up. What am I saying? Probably. There's an Octopod right there and another Octo as well. These units are going to be going down. The Octopod alone could take care of them. The Octo is just there to help out a bit. But Cybernetic Pony will not allow that to happen. It looks like he's undone that. Kept his units at home and is building up for a stronger infantry rush later on, which actually is probably fine. He's probably able to assume that Noctbot has been built by now. But that rush has been echoed out. And it's good that it was, because that would have been a waste of units otherwise. Cybernetic Pony getting up 
a factory, and that is where he's likely to make his real plays. Probably Lancers, maybe HHCs, but he really likes Lancers, so I expect that's what's going to happen. Lancer with Marine, not a bad mix, though it does suggest that he's probably thinking of doing infantry push at the 8 minute mark or so, once he assumes that Jericho will have air, because typically Grecon gets air on the 6 or 7 minute mark, and that would mean like, getting Lancers up like, Five or six Lancers with some infantry would probably do the trick for a nice combined air-ground assault. Much more effective against Vekir, I think, than against Grekum, but it could still be quite effective. Just because Grekum's heavy pods, they're a bit easier to get to than... Well, Vekir probably wouldn't be going as much for air. They would like to get Teth Veer, they might not get Teth Turchers. And there we go, Lancers are being built up. Anyway, Vekir might get Teth Veer, or Teth Pulsar, probably not Teth Turcher. If they got Teth Turcher, it would change things up quite a bit. But with Teth Pulsar, it's... Well, it's basically a matter of if you get rid of the Teth Pulsar, you're good. The Zion Pulsars can't deal with the Lancers. And the Lancers actually... No. Hmm. I'd have to think about it a bit more. But at any rate, Cybernetic Pony is aware of the Grekum thing, so I really don't know why I'm speculating about Vekir. Grekum is what he knows he's fighting. I guess he expects that it'll work pretty well against... The Octopods, just because the Octopods will be distracted by the Lancers while the Marines get rid of them. Granted, the Lancers, as we can see right now, do not do enough damage to the Octopods to actually be a scary opponent for the Octopods. A couple of them will get rid of an Octopod, but that's that's a lot of money spent in there. Cybernetic Pony losing his Lancer, though he has plenty of time to go back and fix that. At the 547 mark, he's still moving forward with it. No, he's going off to the side. He does not want to get in there, does not want to get that Lancer killed. Very wise, that one. That move, I should say. Cybernetic Pony seems to be a pretty good wisdom, but... That particular move itself, though. Getting the Lancer out of the way. Might be trying to synchronize the attack. Definitely easier to do with the Lancer than it is with everything else. And is the Lancer going in? No, the Lancer's not going in. I'm a little bit surprised he's not moving that in there to distract the Octopod. While the infantry come in. However, the infantry will be able to get rid of the Octopod regardless of distraction. Only losing one of their number. Not a bad trade-off right there for Cybernetic Pony. And that's really what he goes for with this, is the fact that the infantry are fairly powerful if they get into range. You have enough of them, Octopods don't have splash damage, so they can't easily destroy the infantry as a group. It's really a matter of how fast the Octopods deal damage. So enough Octopods will be fine. And the Lancer here we are, now it's coming in to distract the Octopod, and the infantry will survive with one extra member of their team alive, but the Lancer will be taking a lot of damage in the meantime, and no, actually, that's not going to help out at all. Or it might slightly. The Lancer's damage output might help, but... It will appear that Jerrikun's not actually having his Octopod get distracted by that. No matter, Jerrikun does have some reefs being set up. He's likely to get advanced structures fairly soon, probably around the 7 minute... Well, it's a bit later than I expect. Should be getting it now, actually. 6 minute mark, he can get it. I expect he will, but he appears to be more focused on building up Octopods. While Cybernetic Pony is going for Macrofab. Sorry, I'm not saying Macrofab. He is... Well, he might be going for Macrofab. He doesn't have machinery right now. He's getting more QPRPs. So I could say Macrofab is definitely plausible. But we will see what comes up from that. The mech could be just there to build defense turrets. And... No, probably not. So the 720 is... Well, very focused on unit production. So that mech is just there for preparation for the future. Jerrikun, on the other hand... At the 530 mark, he does have a research, he does have advanced structures being researched at the 622 mark, so we see the yellow bar here in the unit's created line is the research. Very likely to be advanced structures, it might be something else, but I highly doubt it. Cybernetic Pony at the 613 mark, double checking this attack, really re it, I'm not sure why he's burning a lot of chrono energy on this. Initially worked out pretty well, Jerrikun hasn't really done a whole lot to change this up. And Jerrikun from his point of view... Well, other than apparently echoing out the Octopod in the first place, he's just not going for that. He knows he can't win, so he's moving back and keeping it in defensive position. Best thing to do, Advanced Structures is being researched. Cybernetic Pony not going for any analogous research. He is... Oh, actually, he was getting attacked by that Octopod, but that Octopod getting cancelled. No worries about that. And Cybernetic Pony is not building up any Macrofab. This is when I'd expect him to do it. He does have the resources for it right now. He does have the QP, I should say. 80 LC, 60 QP, he does have 60 QP, but he's not going for a Jericho on the other hand at the 720 mark. Never mind, the 7 minute mark has defenses set up nicely. He is getting a Spire set up at the 7 minute mark, so he will have air units by the 8 minute mark. However, given 
the way that Cybernetic Pony is building up, I doubt he's going that strongly for... Well, the infantry combined arms approach. He appears to still have that in place. And there's the Macrofab. Probably going to use that to build Mar tanks into Twin Mars. So I expect ground units, to be ground units will likely be researched soon. And that would be more the combined arms. Would be having, well... ATHCs for anti-air, Lancers for distracting the anti-air, and or distracting anti-air units, and because really that's what they do. Without aerospace upgrade, Lancers are basically a distraction. And, oh, Gate Tech. Very quickly getting Gate Tech. Interesting choice. Probably going to get a Teleporter and use that to fire. He might go for a Chronoporter. He only has four Q, five Q Plasma RPs. That's not enough to support a Chronoporter and the unit production he's likely planning on doing for the Macrofab. Getting his infantry further, and Jericho at the 9-minute mark, finding the infantry, and... Oh, jumping back slightly from that, but he does have to deal with an attack coming in at the end. Playable past Edge. Couple of pods, couple of Octopods versus the infantry and the Lancer. The Sepipods will get to the Lancer before anything happens, or one attack comes in. But the Lancer going down way too quickly for it to matter. That Lancer was a... Re like I said, it's a distraction. It doesn't actually do anything useful. The HHCs are fairly powerful against air, so that's going to be fine. The infantry are going to be fairly powerful against air, so that's also going to be okay. But the Lancer is not going to do too well. However, it appears to have been spared by this last iteration. Now, J Raccoon, about the 850 mark, is... Looks like he's saving up for Gate Tech, or Chronoporting, rather. Once he gets the Q-Plasma 4, he will build it. He's not actually expanded, though, and Cybernetic Pony is making sure he can't expand to this expansion. Not making sure anything about the side expansion, which J Raccoon has not taken, and Cybernetic Pony actually has taken his Northwest expansion. So Cybernetic Pony is certainly more spread out for economy. I think both players are about even. Cybernetic Pony is a bit more Q-Plasma. J Raccoon... Actually, no, Cybernetic Pony is ahead in economy. Both players have six Liquid Crystal, but J Raccoon has three Q-Plasma RPs to Cybernetic Pony's five. So Cybernetic Pony is definitely ahead as far as anything goes. But there we go. Granny is being researched. That's more what I expected. Since, like I said before, that would allow for Twin Mars. I was a little bit surprised by the research of Gate Tech. Not terribly surprised, just, it's more the timing. And Cybernetic Pony doing his other signature move of getting rid of the crates, making sure that Jericho cannot expand to this expansion. Not really a useful idea. Jericho not keen on expanding, and really this expansion would be the one to kill. Not this one here to the south, not this natural expansion. That one's not going to be used, very likely. I'm a little bit surprised Cybernetic Pony is going for this one, but like I said, he's. I don't sure how much he's played in this map, I don't know how much he notices. Apparently having major lag issues, not sure why. This is, of course, a replay, so I can't actually notice that. Plays back fine for me, but that's just kind of mean to say. However, probably he's going to be working fine soon enough. So once Mar tanks come in, which will be very soon, I'm sure, I do expect some Mar tanks now, actually. In fact, I'm a bit surprised that they haven't been built yet. Granted, with the lag and the current energy and the fact that he's focused very much on battle, there is the Mar tank. And he's microing at the unplayable, or macroing at the unplayable past edge, which is not the best place to go for it. It's going to be tricky. Because clearly he wants to destroy all these crates. But, like I said, I don't know why he's destroying these four crates. It's a lot of crates to destroy, and... I guess the obvious expansion, I can see that. But it's not the one that people go for. Regardless, it was one of the Cybernetic Pony went for, so I kind of see why. And given the map design change, most of the time... When people did that, the map design was did not have these blockers right to the natural expansion. It was pretty open to get to the natural expansion, so it wasn't the popular one. Whereas over here, it was nice and blocked off. This change to the map design does make the natural expansion much more viable, which is which is a point to consider. And Cybernetic Pony clearly has considered and assumed that Jericoon is going for that too. However, Jericoon has a nice little army set up: a couple far pods, three semi pods, four octopods. Cybernetic Pony does not have a counter army really set up. He is trying to get what he can. He does have machinery being built up. Probably get a bunch of frigates. Or no, can. Doesn't need frigates. Probably to get MFBs then. Or maybe blackbirds. Because he doesn't need that for frigates. You can get frigates now. Not sure what he's going to go for. Like I said, he's microing, or macroing very close to the unplayable past edge. Which I can kind of see why he'd want to do just for the sake of having his units pretty quick in. But as I mentioned before and continue to mention, macroing in the present is the most efficient way to do it. You may need to re-macro a bit, but still, macro in the present will save a lot of chrono, or near the present at least, will save, within a minute to the present, will save a lot of chrono energy that can then be used for micromanagement, or changing up your macro management further in the past, rather than having to do all of it with 
all of your current energy for pretty much every single move. Regardless, Cyber Knight Pony and Jericoon both prepared for battle right now. Neither player has Gate Tech or Corona Porting or any of those techs. Jericoon apparently did not end up saving for it. He went for the units instead. And... First battle coming in. And this is... Well, at least Cyber Knight Pony was in position to stop the RPs. So this expansion being destroyed and... The units coming in to try to take it. Jericoon also going to the southeast expansion. And the Octos trying to take it are actually distracting the forces that would... One of them goes down, but the distraction does cause have the imagery be destroyed. And Cybernetic Pony is not really able to do anything. Apparently lag has gotten too bad. That's a little bit unfortunate. Possible transatlantic cable problem. I know Cybernetic Pony is in the UK while J Raccoon is in the eastern United States, which could pose a problem for intercontinental in internet. That isn't unheard of. Rather unfortunate the timing, though. But it looks like Cyber Knight Pony still has enough ability to command his troops that he is able to get Gate Tech, he is able to move his units into position, and is able to get more Mar Tanks and Twin Mars to try to even this out. No frigates, mind you, entirely based on Lancers and ATHCs for anti air. Getting more Mar Tanks, I'm a little bit surprised. Not very, but a little surprised he hasn't gone for a second macro for frigates, but it looks like he's probably going to go for a teleporter once he gets the Q Plasma for it, which is right now. He can go for a teleporter and teleport in all of his units. Not sure why he's not doing that, but I'm sure he will soon. Anyway, Jericoon. Actually, Jericoon rendering that unnecessary, moving in himself. Both players moving in towards each other, beside each other, avoiding each other's armies, but Cybernetic Pony is fully aware of what Jericoon is up to, and it looks like he is. Well, he might be trying to deal with that. Not sure if the lag will get in the way, but he is likely to try to deal with this. However, his armies are very much out of position. He lost all of his infantry over at Jericho's natural expansion. His main army is able to pull off a flank, but it'd be very difficult to really make work with the Twin Mars. Tornado coming in for extra ground support, but really what he needs is anti-air support. And no, Cybernetic Pony has thrown in the towel. And that is the game. A rather anticlimactic game, I'm afraid. Well. Sorry, it ended rather uninspired way and slow way, but it happens sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed that, despite the slow ending. And that is going to be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.